In this video, I have a few uh, techniques that I showed at a seminar of mine in Saigon, Vietnam, at a gym called Team Shark. In this seminar, I taught basically two main things. Okay, I taught the X guard, and the main concept we talked about was sequencing together different off balancing mechanisms from the F, uh, from the X guard relative to like different movement options your opponent has. Okay, and we talk about the concept of base. Okay, and how to use off balancing mechanisms uh, relative to the form the form of base he's using. Okay, the second topic it uh, was the diagonal ashi and the aoki lock, specifically how each of these two forms of leg lock offense connect to our opponent's ability to move his hips, okay? Much of our opponent's capacity to defend himself against leg lock threats has to do with his ability to move his hips, okay? And the diagonal ashi and aoki locks, they have a lot to do with this concept, okay? Diagonal ashi specifically in so far as like restricting hip movement is concerned and aoki locks in so far as like sort of adapting to hip movement, okay? So, uh, that's what this seminar was about. These are a few videos from that seminar. Okay, the full seminar is available on my Patreon. The link is in my Instagram bio. I'm also going to put it down in the description down below. And it will also be on my new Diagonal Ashi Instructional, which is going to be on my website, which I'll also link down below. And is in my uh, Instagram bio. Okay, I'm going to try to be more consistent uh, with uploads and stuff, guys, it's tough with all the traveling that I do. So I try to record every single seminar that I do. Okay. Get all those on Patreon and upload a lot of them to YouTube as well. But, um, yeah, beyond that, you know, try to be more consistent. I want to put up more analysis videos, etc. Hopefully when I get a home base as soon as possible, that's one of my goals. I want to have a home base and not move around so much. When I have that, I'll be able to put out con uh, content more consistently. But uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video here. And if you're interested in the rest of the seminar or in like the Diagonal Ashi, uh, more generally speaking, please check out the instructional and my Patreon. Thanks, guys. We're going to go over two main topics, okay? Um, we're going to go over off-balancing from like various Ashi Garami positions. And then we're going to talk about when we have put someone down to his hips or maybe even if we haven't put him down to his hips, different ways to go for leg locks related to how he can move his hips, okay? So one of the big defensive problems that we're gonna look at later in the seminar is hip mobility, okay? So someone moving their hips, okay? If that doesn't make sense now, don't worry, we're, we're gonna explain it later, but that's what we're building up towards, okay? But before we get there, we're gonna talk about a different defensive problem, which is when he's very stable and he's standing, okay? So we're gonna start in an Ashigurami. So here. So guys, we're gonna start in a standard ashigurami. I keep, keep a good base for me. So we start in a, in a standard ashigurami. So some common mistakes people make with this position is that they don't connect the inside of their knee to their ankle here, okay? So you wanna have this connected, okay? Because if it's not, it's really easy for him to push, oh my, yeah, push my foot off his hip and, and uh, he could back up and escape and stuff, right? So what you wanna have is your ankle and your uh, inside of your knee touching. So to do that, what you want to focus on actually is where is this foot? Okay, if this foot is pretty low on the uh, hamstring, it'll be really easy to connect it to my knee, uh, my ankle here, okay? The higher my foot goes here, the, I can still I can still make this connection, but it's way harder. If my foot's low, it's very easy to make this connection, right? So when you're trying to make that connection, what I want you to focus on is just get your foot as low as you feel like you need to get it, right? It shouldn't, like, this shouldn't be a, like, physically hard thing to do, right, if your foot's low enough, okay? The second thing that you, you can do is take your hand here, take your pointer finger and your thumb as far as you can, and post on your thigh, like, right in the center, okay? What this does is it makes it really easy to keep your hips high. You don't need this, right? It's not like essential. You could also have an ankle lock grip. This is fine too. But what I like to do is, is I like to have this here uh, because it keeps my hips really, really high. Now when we bring our hips low, which we are gonna do, you have to take an ankle lock grip because now there's nothing controlling the leg. But when my hips are high, sometimes I like to post on the thigh, right? So that's kind of like a silly little way you can remember this. Hips are high, post on the thigh. Hips are low, you take an ankle lock, okay? So anyway. We start here in this standard Ashigurami single leg X position, and we're gonna look at some off balances here. Okay, so uh, stay right here. So before we 
look at some of the off balances, let's just talk about what is the goal of an off balance, okay? So, and to talk about that, let's first talk about what is a base, okay? Let's just define a base as being the surface underneath our opponent's body in which he's in contact with the floor, right? So actually, you can sit down for a second. So, okay, if I'm standing on two feet, right? The, my base is this surface. If I'm on my two hands and feet, the, my base is everything underneath my torso, right? If I'm on one foot, it's only underneath my foot, right? So uh, what our goal is gonna be is to identify like, okay, where is his base and can we reduce his base, right? Can we sort of find ways to take him from maybe four hands, uh, sorry, four hands, <laughs> four limbs, like two hands, two feet, two feet, maybe to one foot and then sweep them over, okay? So, he's in. And then, uh, we'll, we'll talk about this more as we move on, but like, obviously his base can sort of like be regained in different directions and we want to block him from being able to do that, okay? So, okay, we're in the standard ashi. First thing I'm gonna do, a very basic off balance, uh, so don't fall down from this. He should not fall down from this. We're gonna push our hips that way and he's gonna, that's what's gonna happen. He's gonna step his leg back. If someone falls from this, they're not trying very hard. It's like a really easy off balance to stay standing. But what it does is, it starts to shift his momentum in that direction, okay? So I'm here, and I get him to step back. As soon as that happens, I lower my hips, and I take an ankle lock. Now I put my right foot to this uh, hamstring, my left foot goes to the floor. Now from here, I'm not gonna kick him, I'm just gonna lift my hips and push with my shin, and then I can grab the ankle. Okay, if before, like if I'm here, and I just try to grab his ankle, usually it's, usually it's really hard, guys. Okay, usually I can't reach him. Now if it's close to me and I can, that's what I'm gonna do, but it's usually hard, okay? So we start by off balancing that way, and I go here, then it's really easy to grab the ankle. Okay, as soon as I get this, the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring my hips back up, to an ashigarami. Now when his hands come off the floor, it's a super easy thing to put him down, okay? So. Again, we're here, standard ashi, focusing on the position of my foot relative to his hamstring, because that's gonna dictate whether I can make this connection here, and then my left hand cups here at my thigh. The, the cup at the thigh, guys, um, try to keep your forearm relatively straight. Like you don't wanna have like, if you guys look at my elbow on here, this is not good. See how now it comes down towards the floor? That creates like a, a good structure. If I'm like this, I'm not really pushing my thigh up. It's kind of like a weird angle. This is what I want, okay? Now, anyway, we're here, I bump it back. I go here, and you'll notice as soon as my hips come low, I take this ankle up here. Because if I don't, like, obviously, why wouldn't he just step this leg back, right? Yeah, he's, he's gonna get his leg away. So I go here, I bump it forward, I catch the ankle, Oops, come back myself. And I come up here. All right now when he stands up, it's very easy for me to put him down, right? Let's come up. So let's let's talk about why. In this situation, his base is his two feet, right? And now I have a wedge behind both of his feet, and I have wedges over his hips, or over his hip, I should say. And I can push the hip back, and he has no ability, okay, to keep his base in that direction because of my, my hands. Right, so we're here, I can push him back, and put him down. I mean, this is, I think, really obvious stuff, but I think it's good to like, really like, sort of uh, highlight the mechanics of it, okay? So, one more time, bump him back, here, and now we come up. Now, you might ask, what if he keeps his hands on the floor? Is this gonna work? No, it's not. Okay, and that's what we're gonna do next. But first, we're gonna deal with when his hands come off the floor, we put them down. Okay, make sense guys? All right, let's just try One, two, three. Now let's go over what if he doesn't take his hands off the floor. Okay, so let's just let's skip forward over here. I go up, and he doesn't put his hands on the floor. The reason this will make it hard for me to put him down is that Okay, his base is now, I'll see here, his base is not just his feet, right? It's his feet, it's the area underneath his feet and his hands, right? This is all his base now. 
And I have the ability with these two grips and my legs around his hip, I have the ability to put him down if this is if this is all he has as a base because he has nothing to sort of uh, keep his, his ability to stay upright in that direction if this is all that he has as a base. But here, because this is his base, all of this, I can't put him back, right? So, um, so what are we gonna do, all right? So when I'm here and I realize, okay, he's not pushing up, right? I'm gonna lower my hips, I'm gonna take an ankle lock. Whenever I lower my hips, I always take an ankle lock, or I should say, it's not really an ankle lock, this is what we call an over wrap grip, uh, because this is not really his ankle. Anyway, whenever I lower my hips, I take what we call an over wrap grip, okay, or an ankle lock grip, okay? I just don't want him to pull this leg away, okay? So from here, I'm gonna go to an X guard. And now, because my legs are controlling this leg, I'm gonna let go with my hand, right? Now from here, I'm gonna push and pull, get his leg over here, just sort of start to make it difficult for him to keep his base. And then I'm going to start to work to get my left hand underneath his leg. Okay, there's two main versions of the standard X guard. Okay, so stand up tall for a second. There's two main versions. One with an over wrap grip and one with a scoop grip. Okay, generally speaking, I think the scoop grip version of an X guard is much, much stronger for a reason that we will cover in a moment. Okay? If you look at what he can do with his foot here, he can keep the foot flat on the floor, like very easily. It's not easy for me to get the foot off the floor, okay? If I can get to a scoop grip, okay, now it's very easy for me to get the foot off the floor, right? And if you guys understand what we've been talking about when it comes to the base, that's all he has in the base now, if he's standing, right? And even if his hands are on the floor, right, this is a much weaker base, okay? We're gonna see there's different ways to, um, different ways to like exploit uh, his base here. Okay, his hands are on the floor, he's standing, there's various ways to exploit his base. Okay, so, but first of all we have to talk about how do we get him. If his hands are on the floor, if his hands are on the floor, he has a stronger base, but what he can't do is put his hands on my legs. Okay, so one way he'll escape this is by posting on my legs and then backstepping. Right? Let's go back. And if you know, if he's standing, that's a constant threat. And we have to address that, right, with hand fighting. Right? <coughs> hand fighting, stop and push and pull. But if his hands on the floor, I don't have to worry about that as much, right? So let's bring this leg out and a hand back on the floor. I don't have to worry about that as much. So what I can do is I can take this hand, which otherwise would need to be hand fighting to keep this leg safe. I'm gonna go either here or here. Wh whatever, whatever feels better for you guys, right? I go here, but when I make the grip, whether it's over or under, right? Grip the back of the knee. Don't do this. You can see where my fingers are on my right hand. This is not good. I want you to go behind the knee. Okay, and, and to do this, your wrist will bend. We call this a false grip, okay? It's called a false grip because you're not gripping so, so much with like your muscles per se, but like the structure of your arm. Okay, it's like a, it, if you guys know like what a grappling hook is, it's like a grappling hook, right? So this, the, this grip is not maintained with like, like this is a regular grip, right? I'm, right now I'm gripping with the muscles of my hand and my arm, right? A false grip is this, because it's not really a grip per se, right? It's the structure of your arm that's forming the connection, okay? So I grip behind the knee. You could, again, guys, you could go like this or like this. Why do one or the other? I, it, I'm, it's completely subjective to the situation, right? Sometimes like, I feel like a guy's got a really fat leg in a certain direction, right? So it's hard to do one or the other. So you just kind of got to feel it in the moment. Here or here, they're both fine. But you have to have some kind of connection. Now my left hand is going to pummel in a very specific way. I'm going to get my thumb very, very high. Now I'm going to turn my wrist down, and I'm going to punch my elbow inside, and then I'm going to go underneath. I, I, don't, don't turn away from me so much. Yeah. And I'm going to go here. So let's go back. Guys, if he, if he does turn away from us, we have a very good response, but we will get to that later. Let's first deal when you're kind of like square with me here, right? So again, I go here, hand comes high, my left hand. Now I turn my wrist this way so I can get my elbow inside this space. This space is small, guys. If I just try to go like this, it, this it does not work, okay? So I have to go like this. I get it high and look, I just can fit my elbow inside. And now I get this, uh, leg on top of my shoulder and I grab the top of the thigh here. A common mistake I see is people do this. Okay, so bring your hands up for one second so they can see. 
he will do this. They're doing this because in the gi, this is really good. You can hold the fabric, but in no gi, you can't. Okay, obviously, he, there's no fabric here, right? So his hands go like down. I want you to hold here, okay? In no gi, everything is about constantly off balancing and addressing this hand. I don't want this hand to get close to me. If he can grab my head, this is a problem, right? It's not the end of the world, we can deal with it, but I'd rather it not happen. I want to post at the back of the, uh, the elbow here with this hand. Okay, or if he goes here, I want a hand fight, right? But that's gonna be that's gonna be hard if his hands are on the floor. Okay? And we're gonna see when his hands come off the floor to do this, this way is to off balance him. Okay? So anyway, uh, for now, let's assume he keeps his hands on the floor. Now we have a scoop grip, okay, and it's on top of our shoulder, and I'm holding the top of the knee. I'm gonna push and I'm gonna come up on my elbow. We're gonna do the most basic. Uh, and in my opinion, probably the most effective sweep from this position. It's called the get up sweep, right? All we're gonna do is we're just gonna get up, okay? I take my left foot, I put it here, like I'm stepping kind of on the inside of his thigh, and I bring my hips out, and I'm on my right elbow. From here, I come up onto this leg, and then I put my left foot down. And now we just, we just get up, right? And from here, a couple different things can happen if he stands up. Uh, all the way. Yeah, it's, this is essentially like a single leg takedown at this point, right? If he goes back down, it's still kind of like a single leg, right? Like you're, it's like a very high treetop single leg. From here, you'll either put him down or if he's really good, you'll have to attack his back, okay? So again, it all starts from single leg X. I bump him back, I bump him forward, I catch here, but now he's smart and he doesn't take his hands off the floor, right? So I can't put him back. So I go to an X guard, okay? I push, pull, now I get my grip underneath, and he still keeps his hands on the floor. Okay, the weakness of this from his perspective is that he can't do much to sort of mess with my leg here. Yeah, and we're gonna see when he does that, we have, we have options to off balance him, right? Um, but for now, his hands are on the floor. Okay, uh, it's gonna be tough to take him back, okay? It's gonna be tough to take him forward. So what I have to do is I have to get up. What I have here, like the strength of this position from my perspective is that, okay, his base is solid, but I'm underneath his base. So as I come up, right, like you start to reduce his base, right? Like um, I think of the X guard as being like, uh, uh, like a little gremlin inside an engine, the engine of a machine, right? The machine can work properly until the gremlin starts fucking with it, right? So that's how I think of the X guard. You're a little gremlin inside the engine of his base, and you're trying to find ways to fuck it up. Okay, anyway, from here, very important, especially if you're sweaty, go like this. If he's sweaty, he could definitely kick out and then get away from me and you lose everything. So let's just go back here. Hold here. And what I would do is start walking this way and running towards it. He'll either accept the bottom position or you attack the turtle. Either way, it's a success, okay? Make sense, guys? Any questions before we get started? All right, let's give it a try. One, two, three. Now let's look at, we're gonna go back to the X guard and we're gonna look at um, uh, a, a, another way to put him down to his hips. And this sweep that we're gonna look at also leads into um, one of the main uh, uh, positions we're going to talk about in the seminar, okay? So, Alan, sit down for me. Yeah, yeah, stay right here. This is good. Okay, guys, we're going to talk today a lot about this position. This is called the diagonal wash, okay? Both of our feet are on the inside, and so it, whenever we're doing leg locks, we have a primary leg, that's the leg inside my hips, and we have a secondary leg, that's the leg that's not inside my hips, okay? Sometimes you can have both inside the hips, in which case, I would say the secondary leg is the one that's farther away from me. But usually, usually you only have one leg inside your hips, okay? So primary leg is the leg inside my hips. Secondary leg is the leg outside my hips, okay? So um, we're going to talk about this a lot, right? Uh, and the diagonal ashi is <coughs> where my feet are inside his hips, right? They're inside his hips. And the lower half of his primary leg is outside my hips, all right? This is a really, really strong position for uh, a key reason 
called double trouble, which we will talk about later. But first, let's look at how can we get there off of a really effective X guard sweep. Okay, so I'm back in the X guard, I have a scoop grip. This time, uh, so let's put your hands on the floor. Remember guys, the, the hands being on the floor uh, means that it's harder for him to sort of uh, mess with my legs, okay? My right leg here has the job of preventing the back step, okay? The back step is if he steps his left leg back, yeah, and put the, and stop here, good, and, and posture up, all the way up, good. So what he just did was a back step. And why this is dangerous for me is that now he is occupying what we call my J point. My J point is the line across basically my, uh, the top of my knees and my hips, right, where I'm in jeopardy of having my guard pass. Because basically the way a guard works, right, is that I want to have the ability to push him with my legs to keep his upper body away from my upper body, right? Here, I can only do that with my knees and shins, which require a lot of like, I have to really bring my knees into my chest here. It's not as effective as if I was facing him and now I can push him with my feet, okay? So when you have a guard, you can push him with your feet, your shins, or your knees. And you've got to be able to push him to, to, to keep him away from you. So here, it's harder to do that than if we're here. So the back step is a really effective move on his part. I want to keep my, my shin behind the knee for the most part because that's where it's hard for him to back step. If I'm here, he can back step very easily. Yeah. Let's go back. Okay. I want to keep my knee facing up this way. I don't want it out here. So now when he goes to back step, he goes to back step, it's pretty hard, right? Now what he can do is he can take this hand and post it on my shin and push it down. Now the back step is easier, right? Because he lowered my, my right leg. Let's go back. He lowered my right leg, right? So when he does this, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to hand fight and I'm going to push and I'm going to take his, this foot off the floor again. Now, when he goes to push with the other hand, yeah, that hand, we trip him, okay? So, let's go back. So up here, okay, he wants to push his leg down. He could do that with either hand, right? You can do, uh, no, no, you can do it like this. He can do that with either hand, right? So let's go back. This hand, I block it. So now he's gonna go with the other hand. I sit up, now when he goes for it, we knock him down. All right, let's go back. If I try to do this with the, <coughs> with the foot flat on the floor, I'm just giving him a back step. So don't do that, okay? We want to time this for when both hands are off the floor and I can get this foot off the floor. And then I pull him to me and then I would trip him, okay? This will also work if he's standing all the way. Yeah, he's standing all the way. Here I push, and that'll work, right? The, 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 the point is basically we just, we pretty much only want to do it, so stand back up. We only want to do it when there's only one foot on the floor, for various reasons, right? And the main reason only one foot's going to be on the floor is because he's probably trying to post on our shins to, um, to, to push our leg down to get a back step, okay? So, I'm here. He wants to push this down to get a back step. So you, you, can hand, you could go like underhand, you can go overhand. It's really not that important, right? I just want to keep this hand off my chin, I hold it. So now he's going to use the other hand. I extend him, and now when he reaches down, we trip him. Now when we trip him, guys, my left shin pushes him this way as my right leg pulls the shin this way. And I would continue to hold this. Now when I put him down, I sit up and I grip him right here. Now this leg goes at the, uh, the back of his knee. This hand holds here. Now I'm going to take my left leg out and I throw my foot inside. Now my left hand goes underneath and we sit up and we grip the secondary leg. Okay, and we have a very easy transition into a diagonal Okay, so again. I'm here, his hands are on the floor. And again, guys, this will also work if he stands up all the way, his hands are here, you sit here. And I catch, so let's go back up. What's key, guys, is that after I trip him, I catch the ankle. So I sit up, 
relative. I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go here. I trip him and I catch the ankle as he's as he's falling. Okay. Now I I control the secondary leg through a combination of my right shin pushing and my right arm pulling. So I'm controlling the secondary leg. That's this leg through this. Okay. Does that make sense, guys? Now look, this hand here holds the top of his. Uh, his knee, like the top of his thigh. I'm gonna take my left leg out and get my hips close. Now I throw my left leg over the top. Okay, now here we could we could also go to cross ashi. If you wanna do that, that's another option. But today we're gonna look at the diagonal ashi. So from here, I just keep my head forward. <coughs> if my head goes back, he can bring the leg over here. So my head stays forward, I come through here, grip the top of the knee, now I'm gonna, I also hold the ankle. Now I extend my right leg, I sit forward, and we get an over wrap grab. And we're gonna, we're gonna look at this position like extensively now, okay? This is one of my favorite positions. If you get this and you're good at it, he's really, really in danger, okay? So one more time. And, uh, and also, guys, to talk about the X guard again for a second. So if you stand up here. So all these different options that we've looked at from the X guard, you want to always be playing them off of each other, right? So always try to look at what he's doing to give you a direction for what you should be doing, right? If he is like standing, right? You should not be doing a get, a get up to me. It's probably not gonna work. You go here, he's probably just gonna like, you know, put his leg flat and then he backsteps and you're like, you're your guard cadets, right? But if he's standing, you can go for the trip, right? He's got his hands on the floor, hands on the floor. Don't go for the trip. He's just gonna backstep. Yeah, you're giving him that, right? This foot being here is only effective if I have the ability to put him back. And we sort of already covered the fact that if his hands are on the floor, I can't really put him back. It's not, it's not realistic, right? But when he goes to, to fuck with this, right? Now I go here, now he uses the other hand. Yep, yeah, now I can actually do that. And a sign that you're doing this right, guys, let's go back. A sign that you're doing this sweep right is that you can do it slowly and with control. So you reach the side again, look. What I do, guys, look. I can hold him in the air. Now we very slowly can put him down, the catch here, and my right shin slides to the inside of his knee. I hold tight with my left hand. You throw this left leg over the top. Head goes forward, arm comes underneath, arm comes underneath grab the top of his knee. Extend my right leg, and you have a really, really good control of the second leg. All right? Make sense, guys? Yes. Yeah. Uh, question? What if he doesn't use the second uh, hand to fight? You'd have to do other things. Yeah, you could just do a get up sweep, right? Oh, you would always, there's always other things you can do, right? This is assuming that he's really trying to get the, uh, the back step, right? So if I'm here, if he doesn't, let's say he's here, he just keeps, keep the hand on the floor. No, no, keep, keep the hand on the floor. Yeah, I would, I would never do this. I, I would like, Okay. Maybe go back here, right? Maybe go get up, see. Yeah, you just gotta feed off of his reactions, right? Okay. Yeah, so if we're here, here, now he goes to the other one. Yeah, then I would do this. Or if he stands up all the way, right? Like here, he could do a back step just by keeping good base. Yeah, so pick the pick going up and back step. Yeah, here he can do back step, back step, and just keep a good, good base. Right, let's go back. Right, does, does that make sense? Yeah, so always feeding off of his reaction, okay? But if we can. Here, he reaches. Here, I can hold him in the air. Put him down. Over here. Hold him to me. Throw this over. Get this under. And now we have the minute I wash. Okay, let's get this done. One, two, three.